In 1945, the casting process for the movie House of Dracula brought together a talented group of actors. The lead role of Dracula was given to John Carradine, who had already proven his talent in horror films. Carradine's intense portrayal of the character made him a natural fit. Lon Chaney Jr., known for his versatility, was cast as the Wolfman. Having played this character in previous films, he was a clear choice. His ability to convey the character's inner turmoil through subtle expressions was highly appreciated. The role of Frankenstein's monster went to Glenn Strange. Although he was not the first choice, Strange's imposing stature and ability to convey the monster's pathos won over the casting directors. Lionel Atwill, a seasoned actor, was cast as the mad scientist. His experience and ability to portray complex characters made him an ideal fit. His chemistry with the other actors was evident in their scenes together. The casting of Martha O'Driscoll as the female lead brought a fresh face to the film. Her charm and ability to handle dramatic scenes made her a good match for the experienced cast. The casting process involved auditions, chemistry tests, and careful consideration of each actor's previous work. The pivotal moments were those where the actors demonstrated their understanding and embodiment of their characters. The result was a compelling cast that brought the story of House of Dracula to life. Ernest Morisna, the director of House of Dracula, was deeply influenced by German Expressionism, which is reflected in the film's dramatic lighting and set design. He aimed to create a dark, suspenseful atmosphere that would draw the audience into the world of the supernatural. Morisna's creative use of shadows and camera angles kept viewers on the edge of their seats, creating a sense of unease and anticipation. Collaborating closely with his cast and crew, Morisna fostered an environment that encouraged creativity and experimentation. He worked closely with his cinematographer, George Robinson, to create striking visuals that complemented the film's storyline. Morrison's attention to detail was evident in every aspect of the production, from the set design to the costume and makeup. Morrison's direction brought out the best in his actors, who delivered compelling performances that added depth and nuance to their characters. He encouraged his cast to explore their roles and find the emotional truth in their lines, resulting in a film that was both visually stunning and emotionally resonant. Despite facing numerous challenges during production, including budget constraints, a tight shooting schedule, Morrisner remained focused on his vision for the film. His unwavering commitment to his craft and his ability to bring out the best in his cast and crew resulted in a classic horror film that continues to captivate audiences today. In 1945, Universal Pictures released House of Dracula, a classic horror film featuring some of the most iconic characters in cinema history. This movie brings together Count Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Wolfman offering a thrilling and chilling experience. You may have your own favorite character or scene from this movie, and we'd love to hear about it in the comments below. What was the first time you watched House of Dracula, and which role stood out to you the most? Perhaps you were captivated by Dracula's haunting presence, or maybe the tragic story of Frankenstein's monster touched your heart. Or you might have found the Wolfman's struggle with his curse both fascinating and heart-wrenching. Whatever your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie, please share it with us. As we delve deeper into the film, you'll discover many surprising, funny, and even sad facts that you might not have known before. So, keep watching this video to learn more about House of Dracula and its enduring legacy in the world of cinema. The 1945 film, House of Dracula, was produced by Universal Pictures, known for its horror films, the set design was overseen by the art department, who created a gothic-style mansion for Dracula, complete with cobweb-laden corners and eerie lighting. The lab of Dr. Edelman, a key character, featured scientific equipment of the time, including beakers, test tubes, and microscopes to emphasize the mad scientist theme. The movie was primarily filmed on sound stages in Universal City, California. However, outdoor scenes were shot at the Bronson Canyon, a popular location for Hollywood films due to its diverse landscapes. The rocky terrain and caves of Bronson Canyon provided the perfect backdrop for the film's exterior shots. Logistical challenges included the coordination of cast and crew, the management of set design and props, and the execution of special effects. The film employed innovative techniques for its time, such as the use of miniatures and optical illusions to create the appearance of Dracula transforming into a bat. The production of House of Dracula was a complex process 
requiring the collaboration of many skilled professionals. Despite the challenges, the film was completed successfully, contributing to the long-standing legacy of Universal's horror films. House of Dracula, released in 1945, is the last serious Universal horror film, and a notable one. The movie brings together some of the most iconic monsters in cinema history, including Dracula, played by John Carradine, Lawrence Talbot, also known as the Wolfman, portrayed by Lon Chaney Jr., and the Frankenstein monster. The film's plot is ambitious, with Dracula seeking a cure for his vampirism from Dr. Edelman, played by Onslow Stevens, who believes in the power of science to solve all problems. Similarly, Talbot hopes to find a cure for his lycanthropy. The Frankenstein monster also makes an appearance, although it doesn't have a significant role in the story. One of the film's strengths is its beautiful sets, particularly the castle where Dr. Edelman lies. The movie also boasts a dark and ominous atmosphere, which is enhanced by the excellent use of shadows and lighting. The direction is top-notch, and the special effects are pretty good for the time. The acting is generally good, with Onslow Stevens delivering a solid performance as the scientific-minded doctor. However, John Carradine's portrayal of Dracula is less convincing, and some viewers may find it hard to accept him in the role. Lionel Atwell also appears in a supporting role as the chief of police. Despite its many strengths, House of Dracula has some flaws. The plot is dense and covers a lot of ground in a short amount of time, which can be overwhelming. There are also some gaps in logic, such as why Dracula tries to bite a woman when he's being cured. Additionally, the doctor's decision to bring the Frankenstein monster into his castle is never fully explained. Overall, House of Dracula is a good film that is often overlooked or dismissed as silly. While it has some flaws, it is worth watching for its beautiful sets, atmospheric direction, and solid acting. It's also notable for being the last serious universal horror film before the genre shifted towards comedy. The creation of a film score and soundtrack is a meticulous process that involves the collaborative efforts of composers, musicians, and sound designers. In the 1945 movie, House of Dracula, the music plays a crucial role in complementing the narrative and emotional tone of the film. The score for House of Dracula was composed by Hans J. Salter, who was known for his work in horror and thriller films. Salter's music for the film is characterized by its eerie and suspenseful tones, which perfectly capture the chilling atmosphere of the story. The use of string, woodwind, and percussion creates a sense of tension and foreboding, heightening the sense of danger and uncertainty as the plot unfolds. In addition to the score, House of Dracula also features a soundtrack of contemporary popular music, which serves to contrast with the dark and moody atmosphere of the film. The inclusion of upbeat, and lively songs helps to balance out the more frightening elements of the story, providing moments of levity and relief for the audience. The musicians involved in the creation of the score and soundtrack for House of Dracula were highly skilled and experienced professionals, many of whom had worked on numerous other films in the genre. Their expertise and talent are evident in the quality of the music, which remains a standout aspect of the film to this day. Overall, the music in House of Dracula is an essential component of the film's success, helping to establish the tone, build suspense, and create a fully immersive cinematic experience for the audience. Through the skillful use of both score and soundtrack, the composers and musicians involved were able to elevate the film to new heights, creating a lasting legacy that continues to be celebrated and admired by fans of horror and cinema alike. Glenn Strange, known for his role in the Arizona Wranglers Cowboy Singing Group, also made a name for himself as the Frankenstein monster in the 1940s Universal films. Despite only playing the role a few times, his resemblance to the original monster, Boris Karloff, made him the go-to model for merchandising products. Boris Karloff, on the other hand, had a successful career in theater before his film roles. His first Broadway play was Arsenic, an old lace, where he played a character whose face was changed to resemble Karloff himself. He even performed the role in the road company of this production. Interestingly, Strange's resemblance to Karloff in the Frankenstein monster makeup led to his image being used for various merchandise, including posters, book covers, plastic models, trading cards, and comic books. Despite not being a star, his likeness became synonymous with the iconic monster, making him a recognizable figure in popular culture. One of the most iconic scenes in House of Dracula is when Count Dracula, played by John Carradine, is first seen. 
The scene is set in a dark, eerie castle with Dracula standing still against a window, silhouetted by the moonlight. The camera slowly moves in, revealing his face, and he delivers his chilling lines with a calm and menacing tone. Carradine's performance is mesmerizing, and the cinematography adds to the spooky atmosphere, making this scene unforgettable. Another memorable scene is when Dr. Edelman, portrayed by Onslow Stevens, successfully transforms Lawrence Talbot, played by Lon Chaney Jr., from a werewolf back to a human. The scene is filled with tension, and the audience is on the edge of their seats, waiting to see if the experiment will work. The direction, performance, and cinematography all come together to create a powerful and emotional moment. The film's final scene, where the monsters meet their end in a fiery explosion, is also iconic. The special effects, including the use of miniatures and pyrotechnics, are impressive for the time and add to the excitement of the scene. The actors' performances, particularly Cheney G.R.S., add an emotional depth that leaves a lasting impact on the audience. Unfortunately, there are no direct commentaries from the filmmakers or actors about these specific scenes. However, Cheney Jr. was known for his commitment to his roles and often went above and beyond to portray his characters authentically. Carradine, on the other hand, was known for his versatility and ability to bring depth and nuance to his performances. These iconic scenes have stood the test of time and continue to captivate audiences today. They showcase the film's impressive direction, performance, and cinematography, and leave a lasting impact on anyone who watches them. Boris Karloff, known for his role in House of Dracula, had a photograph of him keeping wicket while C. Aubrey Smith was batting displayed at Lord's Cricket Ground in 2004. The display celebrated Sussex winning the county championship for the first time, with a photo included because Smith had been a captain of Sussex CCC. Glenn Strange, who played the Frankenstein monster, faced challenges during the filming of a scene where his character is discovered in quicksand. After spending three hours in the makeup chair each morning, Strange would spend the rest of the day submerged in cold liquid mud, which doubled for quicksand. Co-star Lon Chaney Jr. suggested that Strange use alcohol to keep warm, leading to Strange becoming drunk by the end of the day. In the climax of House of Dracula, Larry Talbot, played by Chaney, sets the laboratory ablaze to destroy the Frankenstein monster. This marked the first time the character clashed with a Frankenstein monster in his human mode, rather than as the Wolfman. The only other time the character had clashed with the Frankenstein monster was in Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, where it occurred while Talbot was in wolf form. The 1945 movie House of Dracula both entertained and sparked discussions among its audiences. It was one of the many films that added to the cultural fascination with horror and the supernatural during the mid-20th century. The movie resonated with people who enjoyed the thrill of being scared and found intrigue in the mysterious world of monsters. House of Dracula influenced pop culture by popularizing the image of classic movie monsters like Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. These characters became iconic figures in horror films and have since been referenced and parodied in various forms of media such as television shows, cartoons, and comic books. The film also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. For example, it explored the idea of scientific progress and its limitations as the main characters sought to find cures for their monstrous conditions through medical treatments. This theme resonated with audiences who were experiencing the rapid advancements in science and technology during the post-war era. Furthermore, House of Dracula touched upon the concept of otherness and acceptance. The characters in the film were outcast, shunned by society due to their monstrous appearances and abilities. This portrayal allowed audiences to reflect on the treatment of marginalized groups and the importance of empathy and understanding. Overall, House of Dracula left a lasting impact on popular culture and sparked conversations on relevant social themes, making it a significant contribution to the horror genre and the broader cultural landscape. Boris Karloff, known for his role in House of Dracula, shared a birthday with his daughter Sarah Karloff. After his divorce, his artist ex-wife Paulin went into hiding due to the relentless pursuit of the press and her fear of Karloff's temper. She gave up her artistic career and avoided the spotlight for the rest of her life. John Carradine, also a part of the film, had two missed opportunities to play iconic horror characters. He was considered for the lead role in Dracula and turned down the part of the monster in Frankenstein, deeming it unworthy. However, 
He later portrayed Dracula in House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula, making up for the lost chances. House of Dracula, released in 1945, received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised the film for its thrilling and entertaining elements, while others found it lacking in originality and effectiveness. Noted film critic Bosley Crowther of the New York Times gave a mediocre review, mentioning that the film was not very impressive and that it does not have the power to thrill. However, the film did have its share of supporters. Variety magazine, for instance, commended the film's cast and special effects, stating that the acting is good and the horror effects are well above average. The magazine also appreciated the film's attempt to bring together various monsters in one storyline. Audience reactions were generally positive, with many praising the film's atmosphere and the performances of the lead actors, particularly John Carradine as Count Dracula. The film was a box office success, earning over $2.5 million in its initial release. House of Dracula did not receive any major award nominations, but it has since gained a cult following among horror movie enthusiasts. The film's enduring popularity is a testament to its ability to entertain and thrill audiences even decades after its release. The accolades it received, though few, are still significant as they reflect the film's impact on the horror genre and its ability to captivate audiences. These recognitions also serve as a nod to the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew involved in the film's production. Lionel Atwell bravely continued working in the film industry despite being gravely ill with cancer. One of his last roles was in the movie House of Dracula, where he played the part of a mad scientist. Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi, two legendary actors in the horror genre, had interchanged roles in the early stages of their careers. Karloff was initially considered for the role of the Wolfman, but it was given to Lugosi. On the other hand, Lugosi was offered the role of Frankenstein, but he declined it, leading to Karloff's iconic portrayal of the character. Ludwig Stursel, who also starred in House of Dracula, had a successful career in television after his film roles. From 1953 to 1963, he made guest appearances in various shows, including a parody of his famous Gallo Wine commercials character in the new Phil Silver show. In the making of House of Dracula, the 1945 horror film, several fascinating stories emerged from behind the scenes. Actor John Carradine, who played Count Dracula, was known for his method acting. He reportedly stayed in character throughout the production, even between takes, which added an eerie atmosphere on set. Lon Chaney Jr., who portrayed Larry Talbot, had a unique challenge during filming. He had to apply his own makeup for the Wolfman character, a process that took several hours each day. This dedication to his role often left him exhausted, but he never complained, viewing it as part of his acting commitment. The film's special effects team, led by John P. Fulton, created innovative techniques to bring the monsters to life. One such effect was the use of miniature sets and mirrors to create the illusion of Dracula's transformation scenes. However, this process was time-consuming and required meticulous attention to detail. Director Earl C. Kenton had to manage a complex schedule due to the demanding nature of the shoot. Actors playing the monsters had to endure lengthy makeup sessions, which often delayed filming. Despite these challenges, Kenton maintained a positive atmosphere on set, fostering a sense of camaraderie among the cast and crew. In one memorable anecdote, a bat prop used in the film escaped during a night shoot. The next day, several cast and crew members reported sightings of the escape bat, causing a brief panic before it was discovered that the bat was merely a prop. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the dedication, creativity, and occasional chaos that went into the making of House of Dracula. Despite the challenges, the cast and crew persevered, creating a film that has endured as a classic in the horror genre. Lon Chaney Jr.'s career trajectory was significantly influenced by the stage production of Of Mice and Men. When Broderick Crawford left the production, Chaney, eager to play the role, credits Wallace Ford for helping him secure the part. This opportunity led to the screen version and eventual stardom for Chaney. His work with Universal began in 1940, and by 1945, he had completed his pact with the studio in House of Dracula. Boris Karloff, known for his roles in horror films, had a softer side. He raised Bevelington Terriers, and one day, while walking them with his four-year-old daughter, they came across an inebriated man. The man claimed he had seen three sheep bark and begged Karloff for a ride to the hospital. Karloff obliged, 
showing his kindness and humanity. After House of Dracula, Cheney's role as Dracula was taken over by John Carradine. Carradine played Dracula in a stage production, on television, and in two more features, demonstrating his versatility and enduring appeal in the genre. The 1945 movie House of Dracula, as part of Universal's horror series, left a significant impact on film history. It showcased a unique blend of gothic horror and science fiction, which influenced future filmmaking. The movie's innovative special effects and atmospheric settings inspired many subsequent horror films. House of Dracula introduced Count Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Wolfman in a single film, setting a precedent for crossover movies. This concept was later adopted in various film franchises, including Marvel's Cinematic Universe. The film also impacted the development of horror tropes, such as the mad scientist, and the reliance on scientific explanations for supernatural phenomena. These elements can be seen in numerous horror and science fiction films that followed. Moreover, House of Dracula inspired several spin-offs and adaptations such as television series, comic books, and novels. Its enduring appeal is evident in the continuous references and homages it receives in contemporary popular culture. In summary, House of Dracula significantly contributed to the horror genre through its innovative storytelling, groundbreaking special effects, and the introduction of new horror tropes. Its influence can be traced through the decades, making it a seminal work in film history. Actors John Carradine, Boris Karloff, and Lon Chaney Jr. have each made significant contributions to the film industry. Carradine, who was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960, has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Karloff, on the other hand, got his breakthrough role in The Criminal Code in 1930 due to his financial struggles. He learned about the casting while at Actors' Equity, as he could not afford to pay his dues at the Maskers Club or even buy a cup of coffee. Cheney Jr., known for his criticism of fractured flickers in the 1960s, made headlines when he spoke out against the desecration of old film classics, including his father's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. His dedication to preserving the legacy of classic films is a testament to his love for the art form. In summary, these three actors have made significant contributions to the film industry, each with their unique stories and experiences. From Carradine's enduring legacy to Karloff's breakthrough role, and Cheney Jew's advocacy for classic films. Their impact has certainly resonated throughout the years. Have you seen the 1945 classic, House of Dracula? If so, we'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this film. How did it impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? Perhaps you were captivated by the chilling atmosphere and groundbreaking special effects. Or maybe the film's exploration of universal themes such as fear, identity, and transformation resonated with you. Whatever your connection to House of Dracula, we'd love to hear from you. Share your stories and memories with us, and let's start a conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, let's delve into the rich history of classic films and discover how they continue to shape and influence the world of cinema.